News Live at 10. Welcome to Valley News Live at 10. I'm Stacey Van Dyke. And I'm Justin Betty. Tonight, the snow is done falling, but the cleanup continues following last night's winter storm. Especially in areas toward the Twin Cities mm. and in far southern North Dakota. Valley News Team's Alex Larson has been set up at the Dakota Magic Casino in Hankinson since early yesterday. She joins us now live with the latest. Alex? Justin, Stacy, boy, let me tell you, this wind has died down, but it is still dangerously cold outside. Take a look up at these flags where you're showing you these last night. They are not blowing even half as hard as they were yesterday. And also, this weather did shut down the interstate for a period of time, which stranded travelers, semi drivers, employees all here at this casino hotel. The hotel was totally booked yesterday. We still got a few few left here, but we've seen a lot of people roll out here now that that road's open, but be just because it's open doesn't mean maybe you should hit the road. It is still again dangerously cold. The wind is still here a little bit, but that blowing snow has died down. Now we did take a peek at the interstate a little while ago and we saw some blowing snow scattered ice, but we didn't test it too far. Now we will keep you updated here with changing weather conditions online and on air, but good news. This is almost over and I'm reporting live from the Dakota Magic Casino. I'm Alex Larson, Valley News Live. Hey, that is good news. Thanks, Alex. As for what Mother Nature has in store for us next, we welcome in First Alert Storm Team Chief Meteorologist Hutch Johnson. Hutch. Justin, good evening, everyone. Thanks for joining us on Valley News Live. And that snowfall here in Fargo, not too much of it, but we sure did get a lot of wind. Look at that crescent moon out there off to the west. Here's a look at some snowfall totals. Once again, Fargo 1.4 inches reported 2.5 or so in Fergus Falls. Five inches though to, for your neighbors to the south in Grant County. How about Browns Valley 10.6 inches? So things really ramped up by the South Dakota border with numerous locations getting over six inches there. However, not much snow reported from the system up near Grand Forks or Red Lake Falls, but the wind was sure ripping. This is what it looked like in the morning drive for Eric Anderson there, a rural drive between Red Lake Falls and Grand Forks. So travel impacts region wide. Check out the big old sun dogs barking over the Memorial Bridge. What a shot, Roddy. Thanks for sharing. Here's a look at our air temperatures. We're all below zero. Alexandria 11 below, Fergus Falls 9 below, and down to the south even, Oaks at 15 below, 14 below in Jamestown. It's a cold one setting up with wind chills around 30 to 35 degrees below zero. And that's with just a little bit of wind. So the wind chill will be the problem. Wind chill advisories for our entire region, a few areas and wind chill warnings. We'll have hour by hour details on what you can expect. But here in Fargo, we're on our way down to the twenties below for that morning drive and morning commute. You may want to give yourself extra time to warm up the car and bundle up the bus riders in the morning. Your forecast has signs of improvement. We'll talk about our next chance of flakes on Friday here in a minute. A cold one. Thanks for the plan. Thanks, Hutch. Snowplow drivers are working around the clock to clean up after the storm brought wicked whipping winds to the FM area. The blowing snow created the biggest headache in the southern part of the city as new developments and few trees leave a lot of wide open space for snow to blow. Crews say this winter has already been busier than last year due to the number of light snows accompanied by crazy winds. You could go down a street and within a half hour you come back and it's drifted again. If a plow still hasn't been down your road, Hendricks says, don't worry, crews won't start on the rest of the city until the winds die down more. Snowplow crews around the region have been working around the clock to keep the roads safe. Valley News Team's Aaron Walling continues our team coverage now from Fergus Falls. Slowing down would probably be the best thing for them to do. Fidel Aguilar has been an MDOT snowplow driver for over a decade, and he has seen it all from pillow snowdrifts to whiteout conditions. But the one thing that drivers like him worry about the most is speeding drivers. More concerned about them, you know, driving into the snow cloud and maybe side swiping us or something like that. The combination of wind being blown into the snow can cause hazards for drivers, especially for those going too fast. We're trying to uh, keep uh, cars on the road, basically. And I think we've seen it a couple different times out there where, you know, people go to pass and then that's when the operator hits a drift and it's a whiteout condition. While riding along with Aguilar, we were passed by a few cars that were speeding, which paired with the snow being thrown into the air from the plows, visibility became an issue. Back off, you know, slow down, 
you know, pay attention. Um, just give us space and just allow yourself more time to get to your destination if you need to travel. Drivers like Aguilar have been out on the road since midnight. And as the storm came through, more and more snow drifts appeared. But thankfully, according to MDOT, the bullseye of the storm missed them. The wind's pretty much blowing it all the way across, so it's uh, clearing it off pretty, pretty easy. In Fergus Falls, Aaron Walling, Valley News Live. And those road crews have been doing a pretty remarkable job of getting things pretty clear. In Minnesota right now, I-94 is normal driving conditions from the border down to almost the Twin Cities uh, with a little stretch around Alexandria. Uh, the only real problem spot down in far southwestern Minnesota where it's still actually no longer no travel advised, just snow covered roads in North Dakota again. Much better situation yesterday. Still some crashes. Keep your eyes on snow covered roads, but no longer no travel advised and roads are open uh, across the area tonight. With our constantly changing weather, however, it is a good idea to keep that VNL weather app handy. You can have forecasts right at your fingertips. All you have to do is search VNL weather in the app store today. In other news, a judge set bail today at $1.5 million cash for the man accused of shooting and killing another man in Cheyenne, North Dakota earlier this week. Nicholas Poitra was the center of a three-day manhunt after the shooting at Rindy Cheyenne Bar on February 19th. He was arrested yesterday after being spotted by a local farmer. Poitra faces 11 felony charges in Eddy County, including murder, robbery, weapons violations, and seven counts of terrorizing. You can read all the details on the shooting on your VN news app. We post breaking news as it happens. You can download and use it for free. Just search VNL News in the App Store today. New at 10, a man is now in jail after making threats allegedly towards his wife and kids while holding a kitchen knife. Fargo police say this happened Saturday. Two teen boys called 911 saying they had barricaded themselves in a bedroom for safety after their stepfather made threats towards one of them and their mother. The man was reportedly intoxicated, brandishing a large kitchen knife. Officers set up a perimeter around the home and eventually got 45 year old Seth Jastrom to come outside. He's now been arrested for two counts of terrorizing. Also new for you at 10, a woman was killed in a snowmobile crash Sunday and thieves stole a snowmobile that was left behind. Around 11.30 a.m., that snowmobile crashed with a tractor trailer on the Sioux Line Trail in Beltrami County. The operator was declared dead at the scene. Hours later, when family and friends went back to get the snowmobiles, they discovered one of them had been stolen. Tracks matching the stolen snowmobile led to a home near Leonard. It was returned to the family. Charges are pending on a man and woman for felony theft. The Beltrami County Sheriff's Office hasn't released their names. A boy was hurt and Sheriff's Office is investigating after a snowmobile crash in Otter Tail County yesterday. The Sheriff's Office says a group was riding snowmobiles on the west side of Bass Lake when one of them hit a man-made embankment and crashed. A kid from Underwood, Minnesota was taken to Lake Region Health Care but then transferred to a Fargo hospital. No update on his condition. In other news tonight, a sexual assault can kickstart a lengthy and painful process for victims. They have to decide whether to make a report and to submit to a medical exam. Then there's the waiting for evidence to be processed. Legal battles begin, which can be taking years to resolve sometimes. Erica Craven takes us through four bills, however, in the North Dakota State Legislature that could have a big impact both on victims and the state crime lab. It was hard. Over was the hard. past two battle. months, Sydney Dollinger and other survivors of sexual assault spoke to lawmakers on what it's like moving a rape case through North Dakota's court system. The criminal process took so long, it took two and a half years, putting me outside the statute of limitations to sue civilly. State senators ultimately decided to pass a bill that allows more time for sexual assault victims to file civil lawsuits. It would give kids younger than 15 21 years to file suit starting when they turn 15. 15 to 17 year olds have 21 years and adult victims have nine years. That bill now moves to the House, a similar bill that would give sexual assault survivors more time to get mental health help passed the House and is in the Senate. Crime lab. Meanwhile, lawmakers also discussed bills related to the state crime lab. The lab is critical to prosecution because it processes evidence, including evidence collected in rape cases. And we have backlogs. Uh, this is a years in the making problem. 
Among other evidence and tests, the lab is roughly three years behind on testing rape kits. Two eyes, 44 nays. One state senators killed a bill that would have allowed BCI to oversee the state crime lab, but pushed through an amended budget for the North Dakota Attorney General's office. It's Erica Craven reporting. Studies show one in five American women will be sexually assaulted at some point in their life, but the majority of those cases are never reported. Researchers say only around 2% of reports are false, but for every 100 rape reports, just 18 result in arrest. Lawmakers in Washington are paying more attention this week to illegal immigration at our northern border. North Dakota Senator John Hofen says he met with Border Patrol recently, including the chief of the Grand Forks sector, discussed the need for additional resources. Says the illegal crossings along the northern border have increased more than 300 percent in the last year, and he's calling for more help. Also resources like the mobile towers, the sensors, working in coordination with our Canadian friends, and the aviation assets as well that we have here. Recently, many Border Patrol agents who had been assigned to the southern border have since returned to their original posts at the northern border. Keep in mind the number of crossings and the number of agents are still much higher on the southern end. Another setback for Gigi's Playhouse in Fargo. There was a sprinkler break yesterday causing a significant amount of water damage. The Down Syndrome Achievement Center has a brand new facility after a devastating fire in May 2021. They say they're now working out a plan to get families back in the door for programs. Later on Valley News Live at 10, we'll look at how the winter storm made history in some unlikely places. And an incredible time lapse as the ice crystals lofted in the sky, creating some loud and barking sun dogs. And check this out. Huh, that's Venus and Jupiter tugging the crescent moon to the horizon. Your hour by hour forecast is coming up next.